Sometimes I hear feeling in times with fear. Freedom we all hold dear now is that stay. Humble your hearts to God, God. save from the chest that chains be wrong. Seek the way pilgrims try, Christians away. My Jesus is Jesus coming soon, morning or morning night or night or noon. noon. Thanks for joining us. Today's program is going to be a very special program because we're going to be dealing with the subject of immigration. I have no clue of what we're going to do, but we got the people here that know some answers and we're going to try to help you. And so if you know, uh, have some immigration questions, just stay with us. Our guest today is Alejandra. Alejandra. Did I say it right? That's correct. Sir. Okay. Alejandra. And what's your, I'm not going to try this last name. Now say this, say this last name again. Arechiga. Okay, good. We're glad to have Alejandra here. Thank She's you, a paralegal and she works for the attorney that we're going to be interviewing and going to be visiting with us today, and that's Fred Ford Sr. That's right. Now, you're an immigration lawyer. That's right, for 47 years. That's what I was thinking to say. You've been an immigration law <laughs> for, lawyer for 47 years, and this is a complicated subject. Yes, it is. Now, he is going to give us some overviews, but this is where we're going to work is, folks. It's going to be different, but uh, just stay with us. He is going to talk about immigration, and then when there's a high point or something we feel like, particularly our Hispanic viewers may want to see, because uh, we'll have Hispanic children watching us that speak English, and their parents may want to get some information, so Alejandra is going to interpret in Spanish. Is that right? That's correct. Sir. And you're going to do a good job. I ain't going to have a clue what you're saying, okay? <laughs> okay. So, Fred, if you would, would you start giving, what, what, is, what is the big ball picture of immigration? Immigration and naturalization as a big ball picture has been with us in the United States since the very beginning. The basic law is uh, the McCarran-Walker Act in 1952, and there have been hundreds and hundreds of amendments to it. That's one of the reasons it's so complicated. You have pressure groups that are interested in immigration. You've got 15 or 20 that are interested, and they push through various and sundry amendments, and after a while it gets to be very, very complicated. The, th the Sixth Circuit Court of Appeals out of Cincinnati, Ohio, and the Second Circuit in New York has indicated that immigration and naturalization law is the most complicated and convoluted area of the law. It changes every 30 days as far as the worldwide immigration quota system is concerned. So you know what the concern is, Mr. Ford, is the news media running their own private agendas when they start reporting stories and politics gets in this thing and so people that's out here in the United States, like myself, American citizens, we don't know what is the policy of immigration. We, we just don't know where we need to stand on immigration. So can you help us understand the, the complex process of immigration? Yes, I can. First of all, in just a moment, I'm going to give you an overview of immigration law. I have copyrighted that. Uh, you won't find it in any other law office or anything, and I'm going to give you a short overview of immigration law. But the policy of the immigration of, uh, is, depends and it changes uh, generally from one presidential from one president to the next. Okay, we've got. In Congress, we've got the, the Republicans rather restrictive when it comes to immigration in the House, and they have a majority there. Then, you've, then in the Senate, you've got the Democrats, and uh, as many people will know, you can't get a law passed unless both sides agree, and usually there's a committee that sets set up when both bills are different to compromise in some way. but there is really no real immigration policy that That's exists today because it is so complicated. Now, President uh, Obama on June the 15th by pre in the Rose Garden uh, 
indicated that there are going to be some changes. Uh, and that has to do with children who are under the age of 16, who are now 15, and those who, and adults up to the age of 31 on what is known as prosecutorial discretion. Now these are children that's been here for a while, aren't they? Yes, they came legally or illegally. Legally. Okay. With their parents, generally speaking. But their parents are not legal, is that? Does that some what are is? and some are not. Okay. Uh, I'd like to uh, give a brief overview That'd of be immigration fine. law because you're the expert. The parents are going to fall into some of these categories when when the children come to my office and they uh, and we look at the seven parameters, the seven things that they need to have in order to stay here and get work authorization, possibly. The parents, probably, many of them, are going to fall into one of these categories here, even if they entered illegally, because many of them uh, were persecuted in their own country. And that is, we have to determine if they have a well-founded fear of being persecuted on the basis of either race, religion, political opinion, membership in a particular social order, gender, or nationality, and if they would be persecuted uh, by a government or an organized group in that government that the government cannot control. We're talking about cartels now. Right. We're right. talking about Al-Qaeda. All over the globe, there are these criminals, some communists, some not, the MS-18, MS-20 uh, in, in Honduras and, and in the Pan American countries. So once the children come in and we analyze to see if they meet the seven parameters, which I'm going to recite in just a minute, the, the parents are probably going to fill into some of these categories. Now what you're telling me, there is help for a family. There's what? There, there is help for a family if they're here and they are they are illegal but there is a process they can go through they might be available they might be able to the great majority will not because they entered without inspection but there are waivers that can be obtained and nobody knows what the politicians are going to do with this after 2 years okay uh, that's after obama's new thing that he declared is over. You don't know what they're going to do after that. That's right. And if the presumptive candidate, uh, Mitt Romney, becomes president, he might or might not extend this. The probability is, even though he's a Republican, he'll probably extend it because you've got supposedly 11 million illegal aliens in the United States. The truth is there's more like 40 million in the United States because the 11 million came from the census. Okay. And, and if you were illegal, you're not going to tell the guy that walks that. up to the door yeah. and, and tell him what your status is. Right. Now these are people that's working. Are they working and earning a wage? Many of them, 95% of them are working. Uh, some of them have work permission and some don't. Some have uh, false social security cards. Some have false uh, uh, green cards. Uh, it's a, a very complicated situation, but I'm looking at about 40 million people, uh, aliens. And the reason, there are two big reasons why we've got this deferred action and inspection for children and, and prosecutorial discretion for the adults. Number one, it's impossible to remove all of those people who are illegal. I got it. I got it. Number two, it's politically important for the candidates to have the aliens thinking that those candidates are for them because many of these people uh, are voters. We've got 
many legal, we've got millions of legal uh, immigrants here that are either with a green card or with citizenship. And I'd like to explain some of the buzzwords that I'm go using. For it. Yeah, go for it. Go for it. Go ahead. May I do that? This and is a brief. When he gets through, right? Mm -hmm. okay. th this is a brief overview of immigration law. I could sit here for eight hours and explain all of the details of it. But basically, when one comes into the United States, he or she is supposed to have a visa, which is a stamp in one's passport from an American consulate in their home country. They are greeted by uh, an inspector who goes through luggage and that sort of thing and asks, and he looks at the visa and he's trying to determine if the person has a non-immigrant intent or not. The non-immigrant visa is stamped in the passport, but the immigration service, which is separate from the State Department outside of the United States, determines whether someone should enter or not. The Immigration Service has jurisdiction over people in the United States. The State Department has jurisdiction or power over someone outside of the United States. So you have to get through the group that's outside the, what the group was it, uh, uh, one that's got the jurisdiction outside the United States? State Department, State the Department. consulate. So we, if you're coming in, you have to get through the uh, State Department they that's have right. to approve you before you can get in that's right at the airport they're okay. supposed to supposed to okay okay this is for the people that have entered legally the inspector looks to see if they have a non-immigrant intent and then if they do they feel that they do they say th they give them a classification a non-immigrant classification it's now what is intent uh, non-immigrant -im intent what does the word intent mean intent means to go back to his own country. He's got to have a non-immigrant intent to go back to his home country. To come into the to United country. States. Okay. And then he's back. supposed to go back. Okay, I got it. I got it. Millions don't. Okay, I got it. Got it here and stay. I got it. The classification is evidenced by what is known as an I-94, an entry and departure record. A little three by four inch white card normally stapled in the passport opposite the visa page in one of 37 non-immigrant categories. We don't have enough time now for me to define all of these, but that's the first step. We use the verb change when we go from one non-immigrant category to another. We use the verb adjust when we're going from a non-immigrant category to an immigrant visa category. There are three broad ways in which one can become a lawful permanent resident one who has a green card. That is on the basis of an immediate relative petition by a parent or spouse. Uh, and there's an unlimited number of people who can qualify under the immediate relative petition. There is a, a limited- the relative, Let me ask you a question. Does the relative have to make that petition or does the immigrant make that petition? Relative makes the petition and so does the employer for an EBP, okay. employment-based petition. So this is a the green card category for those people uh, with immediate relative petitions or family-sponsored preferences or employment-based preferences there is a uh, limit on how many can come in. We have the preference quota. The bulletin is a fancy waiting list. It allows uh, 327,000 into this country per year, broken down into four preference categories for family-sponsored preferences and five preference categories for employment-based preferences. There are some anomalies in the law there are other ways in which to get lawful permanent residency. You got asylum that many okay. of many of the parents will fall into. Uh, the uh, employment creation visas for those people who brought in 500,000 in this country, but there probably won't be many uh, in this audience that will hear that. Uh, for those 
parents that have been here since 1972, they can get a green card just on the basis that they entered in 1972 illegally, but they've got to prove continuous physical presence. Okay, I got it. That's good. That's good. Now, the next step is naturalization. If they uh, get a green card on the basis of an immediate relative petition, they and it's approved, they can become naturalized after three years, actually two years and nine months. For employment-based preferences, they have to have a labor certification. It's a long involved process with the U.S. Labor Department. Uh, and with family-sponsored preferences, these are various relatives here. We don't have enough time to go into fully, but I'd like Alejandra now to explain this quickly to those who speak Espanol. Go for it. Okay. Um, buenas tardes a todo nuestro público. Eh, la gráfica que les vamos a presentar explica detalladamente las formas en las cuales una persona puede venir a los Estados Unidos ya sea con un intento de migrante o no inmigrante. En la primera parte, como se observa, eh, una persona puede venir eh, en una categoría, por ejemplo, de turista con una visa tipo B o con una visa tipo F de estudiante o una visa R de trabajador religioso o H para uh, uh, trabajadores profesionales. Uh, la otra posibilidad eh, que se puede hacer es si la persona tiene un familiar cercano, puede calificar bajo lo que es una petición familiar, ya sea por parte de un esposo o por parte de los padres, pueden hacer una petición para sus hijos, o bien eh, los hijos cuando llegan a tener 21 años de edad pueden hacer una petición por los padres. La otra gran posibilidad para que una persona obtenga una residencia permanente en los Estados Unidos es a través de una petición de empleo, en la cual se necesita que eh, la persona tenga ciertos requisitos, se hace la petición ante el Departamento de Trabajo de los Estados Unidos y se tienen que cumplir varios requisitos. Eh, la persona, dependiendo del trabajo o de la posición que se le ofrezca, necesita cierta experiencia, uh, ciertos estudios, que esta persona no sea alguien adverso a los demás ciudadanos americanos, ¿ok? Es todo este proceso eh, se puede hacer para una persona el, el último paso sería el proceso de naturalización. Cuando una persona ha tenido un buen récord, ha tenido cierto tiempo de residente, dependiendo uh, ya sean tres años o cinco años, puede calificar para la naturalización eh, siempre y cuando tenga un buen carácter moral y un buen récord. Gracias. I got gracias and I got okay. okay. I understood that. Now, tell the folks uh, in Spanish how to get in touch with you, how to get your office, how to get in touch okay. with God. Eh, con mucho gusto nos pueden llamar a la oficina del abogado de inmigración Howard Fred Ford Sr. Eh, nuestra oficina es Foreign Associates y estamos localizados en, el, en Brentwood y nos pueden llamar al teléfono 615-376-8857 y 615-457-2083. Estamos para servirles. Thank you, thank you. Now, Gracias. For somebody that's got questions, they can call your office and start sure. there. Sure. And if they can't, didn't get that thing, call our office and we will try to get them. We'll work it out to get them. Oh, sure. Absolutely, thanks. Okay, now, Fred, I've run into people that, um, that one was in the United States, uh, American citizen, born American mm -hmm. citizen here. And then, and this was a Hispanic family. Uh, and she married this boy from Mexico. And he came in on a visa. He, w he was in here legally. Mm -hmm. And so his mother got sick and he went back to Mexico to take care of his mother. But because he left the country, he couldn't come back in legally. He had to wait three years to get back into the country. She moved to Mexico. Now, that don't make sense to me. It doesn't make sense. Immigration law is very harsh in many ways. Uh, the presidential proclamations are making things a little bit easier because of the pragmatic problem that they can't deport everybody. And it's a political ploy for some, wanting certain minorities to vote for them. Mm -hmm. I got but the answer to, to that particular situation is uh, she could file an immediate relative petition for him. He could, uh, 
it would probably be approved at the uh, Chicago lockbox. It'll be sent to the Chicago lockbox of the USCIS, United States Citizenship and Immigration Service. And uh, then the next step is to try to get adjustment of status. Well, since he entered illegally, he cannot adjust his status in the United States through the Immigration and Naturalization Service. He has to go outside of the United States. <coughs> and if he's over 21, uh, he might fall into the first preference category. But be that as it may, he'll probably come under the immediate relative petition uh, for an unlimited number of people. Now, in order to get a green card, his wife is going to have to file what's known as a waiver, an extreme hardship waiver, to show that it would be extreme hardship on her and her United States citizen children if he were not allowed to come back into the United States from Mexico or wherever. See it at what is is where most of them are. Now, how long a process is that? And then I got another question. But how long a process is that? Just ball ballpark and figure. How long would it be from the time you started? he gets back in and that is a the question, question that baffles everybody that deals with the immigration I got it. service I got it. they are slow and sometimes slower that's where you got that three years because it would take a processing of, of a long period of time someone guessed when they were talking to these people they would take three years it might take a year and a half. I got it. Or it might take six years. What does a person need to know that's got relatives in another country and they're wanting to bring their relatives over here for uh, legal status? What is it? What kind of information do they need to start gathering up from their country? Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yes. We have what's known as the lawyer's confidential information sheets in some 12 pages. Every line in that Lawyer's confidential information sheet, intake sheet, is important. Is it confidential? Y totally confidential. Totally confidential. Uh, I don't want to lose my law license by talking to someone. A judge cannot get information out of me okay. if it's done confidential. The same way with my agents, my employees. And uh, the problem is manifest by the number of people that are going to try to come in. It's a matter of supply and demand. Mm -hmm. There's a great demand. Uh, there's a great supply of people, and then there's a demand. Uh, the immigration... People who are <coughs> outside of the United States and come here to visit, they see what we have here. And Many of them come solely for economic reasons, to get employment, send money home. Others have a lot of money, and they come here as investors. Others have been persecuted by the government or an organized group mm -hmm. that the government cannot control, and uh, they're here to try to stay and, uh, and file for asylum. It's a very, very complicated situation. You are working in a tough area. You've been in this how many years? 47 years. And Alejandra is your, that's it, right? Mm -hmm. You are a paralegal. Mm -hmm. You're in law school. That's correct, sir. Are you going to be in immigration law when you graduate yes, from school? Yes, definitely. I want to become one day a partner at yes. Mr. Ford's Are you an American firm. citizen? No. So you're somewhere on that chart over there? Mm hmm Okay. That's correct, sir. Will you get to be an American citizen? Hopefully one day. You, you work through that thing. How frustrating is it for you trying to get here and trying um, to be a part of what we have here? It's quite complicated um, because as Mr. Ford explained to you previously, it's a congregated process and on my part, I'm doing everything through the legal way. You know, I came to the States with a student visa and now I have a work visa. Um, so, you know, I'm, do and I'm doing a, uh, Mr. Ford is filing a petition for me through a labor certification. So eventually one day I will. I want to ask you this question, and mm -hmm. you don't have to answer this, okay? Yes. I just, because I'm trying to figure out what my, I got three minutes, I'm trying to figure out what my stand on immigration should be, because mm -hmm. I hear all this bunch of this, and they don't, nobody know what they're talking about. So, 
what do you feel in your heart mm -hmm. would be a good, viable, healthy immigration policy for us as a country, for our families, and for families that want to be here? What What would be? A, is that a fair question? The, it and is you don't here. have to answer if you don't. No, we'll I would like to him. answer that. I think I'll answer. <laughs> Go ahead. I think um, right now the U.S. government is doing what is best. I think they are implementing a great policy toward immigrants. I think the fact that you, um, if that people is already here working and making um, America a better place to live, you want to make sure that they have a clean record, good moral character, and that uh, eventually they will have the opportunity to contribute, like pay taxes, do everything that they're supposed to, uh, as it should be done. So I think uh, something has to be uh, in the middle of the road, you know. Uh, I got it. Some type of compromise. I got it. That helps. What do you think? I think the borders should be closed <coughs> in the context of only allowing those people who meet the requirements of the law to come in. As far as those. That's going to mess up the marijuana traffic now, because we. Yeah, well, uh, we want to mess up the marijuana traffic. We want to mess up all drugs, and that's one of the reasons for uh, having the, the borders reasons. secure, the but there are millions, I mean, I think there are 40 million illegals in the United States. The government thinks maybe 11 million, and something has to be done for these people. Many are hardworking Christian people, many of them Catholic, that... we got one minute. One minute. You got something you want to say in one minute? Yes, I do. All right, go for it. There are seven, for children, Okay. there are seven parameters, things that they can be helped if they were under the age of 31 years of age on June the 15th, that they came to the United States before their 16th birthday. 30 seconds. That they've been, what? 30 seconds. 30 seconds that they have no convictions of any kind and that they pass, they come within the law itself as far as the presidential proclamation is concerned. I appreciate you being here. I want you to come back. I want to come back. Bring Alejandro. Praise I, the Lord for you. <laughs> How do you say your last name again? I want to hear that. <laughs> I'm going to learn to say this. I did, Chica. I, I got it. I did, too. We want to thank y'all for tuning in. And if you if you have immigration questions, get in touch with these numbers. Get in touch with us. We'll get you hooked up. We'll try to help you. We're in the business of helping people. Thanks for tuning in. God bless. Thank you, Fred, for being here. God bless you. Jesus is coming soon, morning or morning night, or night or noon. Noon. many will many be will there, be there doom. trumpets will sound, and all of the dead all shall, shall rise, righteous, righteous me in the sky, I'm going where no one dies, going where no one dies, no one dies, no one dies heaven would bound. Your troubles will soon be, we'll be your happy forever, happy forevermore. When we meet on that shore, free from all care, from all care. rising up rising in up the, the skies, telling this, telling this world goodbye. Home and we, home and we will.